Hey guys, so I finally succeeded in making another video and uh, yeah, it was kind of difficult because my computer is not doing too good again. So yeah, it was quite the struggle, but it's finally here. And um, this is uh, this is the second doggy portrait that I promised you guys. And uh, uh, her name is Selma. She's a poodle, and uh, this dog also belongs to. Um, sorry for slaughtering the name, but Saruru Scribbles. And again, she is a fellow YouTube artist, and I will leave a link to her down below. Just if you didn't check her out last time, uh, go check her out this time. Um, but yeah, she's a fellow YouTuber, and I drew her doggies. And um, and Selma here was. Uh, <laughs> Summer here was quite a lot of fun to draw, and I guess maybe I found her a bit easier to draw because I I I was kind of I don't know all warmed up after drawing Bamsa. I was uh, uh, I'm getting more and more used to the paper. That's the most important part probably because I've been fighting with this for a while. <laughs> um, but yeah, I was all warmed up and ready to go. Um, though this was a challenge as well because I've never drawn curly fur before. I I don't. Uh, this is my first curly, curly fur doggy, um, so yeah, it was quite interesting, um, and uh, actually, I had a lot of fun drawing her. I, I really enjoyed the process of this one, and um, I don't know, I felt more free, like, just playing around, and I mean, don't get me wrong, there's always frustration when I'm drawing something, I mean... Uh, especially like there's if you guys are artists you'll know what I'm talking about but the ugly stage of a drawing or a painting that is what that that's when you're that's when when you're really truly tested as an artist because during that stage it's just so tempting to just throw in the towel and be like I quit I quit this shit but um yeah if you just uh, if you just you just gotta get through the ugly stage. You just gotta just just plow right, right on through and just get over that hump and uh, and get into something that's you know the second it starts looking a little pretty, the second you can see it it's not so bad. Just get one section finished and looking all pretty, so that way you kind of have some encouragement. At least that's what I do um, to keep myself interested and to, to keep my <laughs> to keep my spirits up um but yeah and by the way guys i'm sorry if my voice is uh is unpleasant today but i'm sick again uh yeah i know it's uh, i've been sick a lot that's that's what you get for working at a school especially with the kids i mean talk about germs <laughs> and viruses constantly going around and whatnot so um so yeah it really sucks <laughs> But, um, but yeah, so I'm sorry about that, and if there's any coughing and sneezing or sniffling, I apologize, but yeah, um, but anyway, I, uh, <laughs> I, I did enjoy this drawing process a lot, and I, um, for this drawing, I decided to be a little bit more courageous than I normally am, and just, um, I went kind of crazy with the colors on this one, and, uh, the thing is, my reference photo is, it's a decent photo, but when you try to zoom in on it, it is very blurry, and the photo itself is kind of very gray, um, which I thought was kind of depressing, so I I really, I paid a lot of close attention to the colors that I could find in her fur, and all the purples, and the blue, and the and the red, and, and there was some um, I don't know, yellowy orange, like burnt sienna kind of color in there, and, and I decided to just saturate the colors like crazy. Uh, of course, I still wanted it to look like her. I, I paid close attention to, to the way she looks, like the little things that make, um, well, that make Selma, Selma, you know, the, the way her fur sits, the, the, where the colors are placed, and I just, I just exaggerated, um, her features a bit, and, and the colors I found in her fur, because I really, um, yeah, I wanted a colorful piece rather than a very gray one. Also, I couldn't see her eyes in the reference photo when I zoomed in the eyes were just these brown-gray blobs with no detail in them, so I kind of just, you know, I went in there and made my own details. <laughs> um, 
and uh, like my favorite part of this drawing was drawing the color like I'm working on right now that was so satisfying I love red I'm a sucker for red and um, I really was very very excited to see if I can get this leathery uh, effect on the collar and I think I did a pretty good job at it um, at least I'm very happy with the way it turned out I think it looks really cool and uh, God, I used so many colors in there, like reds and lots of different red colors, some orangey colors, some yellow colors, some some light blue, some dark blue, some purple. <laughs> like there's so much in there, but it just it made it look really neat. So I, I really wanted that color shift. Um and and that's like yeah, I just again I really wanted to follow through with the whole exaggeration of the color, so I did that on the collar. Wow, say collar and colors many times in a row. It's kind of it's kind of mess up your tongue, man. Um, but yeah, and and um, I really sorry, that's gross. <laughs> oh Jesus, um, I I did. Uh, sorry, I gotta stop doing that. <laughs> um, but yeah, I did play around a lot with her fur and. Uh, lucky enough for me, there's so much tooth to this paper that I can layer many, many times before I run out of space, which was necessary, especially for uh, for the last year that I draw in, because that one in the reference photo is very dark and very gray. And I thought I tried drawing it accurate to uh, to my reference first, but I thought it looked horrible. It put the entire drawing off balance and it just looked weird. Um, and so I decided to throw away the reference photo and be like, screw this. And I just went in and drew it the way I thought it would look pretty um, and completely ignored my reference. And uh, that is something I would definitely suggest. Uh, unless you're completely new to realism, if you're completely new, definitely follow your reference. But once you've, once you've got a feel for it, don't be afraid to go off reference. Don't be afraid to exaggerate the... Uh, the values, the contrast, your colors, and don't be afraid to throw away that reference photo and make some details up that you think um, make your artwork more aesthetically pleasing. Um, because that's what we do. That's that's what art is for. If you go for something that's completely exactly like your reference photo, well, then you might as well just print out another version of the, the reference. You could just make a printout of the reference photo because then there's no point in drawing it. But if you change up some things, improve some things, and then yeah, you've got a pretty decent artwork, hopefully. Um, at least that's what I think is fun about it. I think it's fun to change things and and make it, you know, try to make it better than reality, I guess. <laughs> and, well, in my opinion, I succeeded. But then again, it's all a matter of taste. Some of you might like the reference photo better. And yes, I have actually inserted the reference photo at the end of this video so you guys can compare. Because I, I normally don't really do that. And uh, I think I'm going to start doing that with some of them because, um, well, I want you guys to have a point of reference to see, you know, something to compare my artwork to. Um so you can make your own judgment and not just take my word for it, especially if there are any other artists out there watching. Uh, maybe you'll be able to learn something. Maybe you can, maybe you can teach me something. Maybe you have some pointers. I'd be happy to hear them. Um, but anyway, <laughs> um, oh God, it's so satisfying when you're finishing up a drawing, just going in with the nitty, like those little details, the sketching process is probably my favorite part of a drawing. And then my second favorite part is definitely detail work, like what I'm doing right now, just getting those little furs in there and just, just getting little tufts of hair and the shadow and the highlights, and it just makes it look so pretty. And um, for this drawing, I actually also tried something new. I left some of the, uh, I let some of the paper show through in certain places of the drawing, like the nose, for instance. There are a few places where I didn't really cover my uh, my background color, and I think it looks really awesome. And uh, I'll probably be doing a little bit of more of that in the future, because I, I want to experiment with that. Uh, <laughs> and um, I'm actually quite excited for that, though I am working a bit with my acrylics now, because I need a break from pastels, but I'll, I'll be ready to go in again soon and uh, try again with some stuff. But yeah, <laughs> oh God, I love that part so much. Oof, look at all those pretty little details. 
But yeah, and I'm sorry there's a big jump here. You don't get to see my struggle with the ear, but this is me just kind of going for whatever I think looks best. So yeah, and um, well, that is actually pretty close to the end of this video. I hope you guys enjoy and uh, well, <laughs> Uh, hopefully you don't mind seeing some realism work because that's probably what I'm going to be doing for a while. And oh yeah, if anybody is curious, Wade, my dear little puppy, is doing a lot better. He's done with his bandages. He's walking all fine again. And uh, yeah, jumping around, annoying everyone. Well, he was doing that while he was hurt too. So, you know, but still, now he's allowed to jump around like an idiot again. <laughs> um, but yeah, anyway... And here is my reference photo. Yeah, there's a big difference here, but I like it. And I hope you guys do too. And I'm just going to end it here. And thank you guys so much for watching. And hopefully I will have more content coming out for you, to you soon. Wow, for you. That sounds like I'm chasing you. <laughs> right. Bye. Oh, God. I'm just chasing